So I'm gonna lay down some warmth in my crease and that's gonna make a neon a little less intimidating. So I'm just gonna use my Milk Makeup Base, but I want you to notice that I'm only putting it kind of in my socket here and then it'll go up towards my brow. And the reason why we're gonna use a white base in a second, we're gonna need a white base to really make the neons pop, but I still wanna kind of have my skin peeking through. So I'm gonna use the clear base from here towards the brow. Oh, and before we move on, a few of you might not have seen this because my stories have been hidden. <laughs> you might not have seen this, but I'm gonna see how small I can make myself. <laughs> we do have little summer sets right now, okay? You see these cute little, the little duos that we put together. We have this, the larger sets, um, but we thought for summer it'd be fun to just kind of do two. Maybe you already have some of the other ones and you just needed two. So yeah, we do have that right now and I wanted to let you know. Also kind of just wanted to see how small I can make myself. I'm a bee. <laughs> okay, I'm done. By the way, love this palette. I've been using it quite a bit. So I think I'm just gonna grab this color. I don't really wanna make the crease too dark. We picked up about that much product. The new formulation on these MAC shadows is top notch. It's incredible. So I'm gonna take that and then I'm just gonna press it. We can always clean up that lid space, which is what we might wanna do. So let's not worry too much about getting it on that lid space. Let's just kind of darken up that crease a little bit. Just a little, I'm gonna tap back in Tap a little more over this way. And this is a really good way um, to kind of get into wearing neons because neons are so much fun and they can be very wearable. It's just about placement and then having this kind of grounding neutral shade in our crease. Let's build that up a little more. All right, y'all know that I can't leave well enough alone. Y'all know I'm gonna add a little bit of depth in that crease. I'm gonna try to pick up a very small amount. I'm going to slowly build it up because I don't want it to get too dark. So let's just add a little bit here. That's on the tip of the brush and I'm using an E28 for this. This is kind of my go-to eyeshadow brush. It is a little bit different because it's a little flatter than most eyeshadow brushes because I wanted to be able to use the center of it as well for precision. And then we'll push it over this way. And then once I have that little bit of depth, see, that's perfect. I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna use a tip. I didn't pick up any more product and I'm just gonna smooth it out and then transition it into that first shade. Okay, we're almost to the fun neon part. Let's clean off our lid. I have some micellar water on a C30. We just wanna make sure that it's nice and clean because we're gonna put a white base here. And what that white base is gonna do, it's gonna make sure our neons are very true in color and very, very bright. I don't know if you all remember, but I mean, it's obviously still a thing, but I remember I really wanted certain colors to pop on my nails, so I would use a white nail polish as a base. So if you ever want something to really pop, or if you want it to be as true in color as it is in the pan, you grab a white eyeshadow base. Now, it might look like a cut crease right now, but I don't know where we're headed. It might end up being a cut crease, it might not. We don't know where this makeup journey is taking us, but we're going together. We are gonna need a white eyeshadow base. I'm gonna, <laughs> there it is. Um, I'm gonna tag it, that way you can check it out. It's This one is fantastic, it's very affordable. I mean, you're gonna probably never use all of it because I do my makeup quite a bit and there's so much left in here. So I'll go get you a link for that but let's grab it on that same C30. And let's just go ahead and put that all over our lid. I'm gonna have to let Gene back in. I hear him breathing at my door. Sounds like a dinosaur at my door. Again, it might look like a cut crease, but we could still soften those edges later so we might not need that precision. I just don't know where we're going. It is Feral Monday and it has been a minute since I've done a cut crease. <laughs> All right, so with this type of look, it's gonna look feral. It's gonna look terrifying. Just remember, please remember, feral before fabulous. But what I do want you to do is to make sure this is really smoothed out. And what you're seeing over here is just nothing. Uh, that's gonna get wiped away. It's really just me making sure it's nice and smooth. And that's kind of me just taking away any excess that might be here and just putting it there. So that's a really good tip. It's something we don't think about. Just use your face kind of as a canvas. 
because it's going to be really easy to clean it up in just a second. For right now, I'm just going to make sure that this is pretty even across here. I'm using the tip of the brush to just kind of pull it and place it. And also don't forget that most of this is going to get cleaned up. So what I think we'll do is we'll keep the neon more towards the front and then we'll probably just come back and finish with some brown. That sounds fun. But I wanted to do this pink. The pink is speaking to me. So let's grab that on an E27. We want a lot of control and we want to just use the side so we can really press it into that white base. And see how I'm going over that top edge of the white? That's why I was saying it doesn't need to be perfect. It's still gonna look like a cut crease, but it just doesn't have to have that precision that we think we need. Do not worry about that. We're gonna wipe that away with micellar water. That's pretty. See how bright that is? Let's make sure you're really pressing it into that base. That's the key to where we don't get creasing is using quite a bit of eyeshadow and really pressing that in. Again, I'm using the side to press that in. Oh, I'm having fun. This is fun. <laughs> so just keep packing it on. It is gonna get brighter as you pack it on. Um, also, I'm laughing because I know that I, <laughs> I kinda look like a moth. <laughs> but I promise this is going to make sense. So I'm just gonna keep pressing that. And then I think we'll add some orange and then we'll go back to the brown. We'll keep it easy peasy lemon squeezy. And you're thinking, Rose, that is in fact not easy peasy lemon squeezy. That is hard, hard, hard. You look like a moth. Please wipe that off. <laughs> I feel like neons are colors that we just, we tend to just not use. They're very terrifying in the pan and I understand that. But when you strategically place them more towards the front of the eye, they become something so much fun, so summery and really easy to wear. You'll see that in just a second. In fact, you could use a lot less of the pink and just do a hot pink inner corner. You could have just placed that white through here and then just did that. Of course, I'm not gonna do that because today is Feral Monday and I'm having fun. But it's a really fun idea. Neons can be very wearable with a nice warm or neutral brown. Same brush, I just wiped it off a little, by the way. Okay, get ready. We're gonna come back to the brown now. By the way, one of my sweetest and dearest supporters just told me that Bakeup is having a 20% off sale. Um, I was hesitant to tell y'all because I wanna go buy some more. <laughs> I don't want it to sell out. <laughs> but I love these palettes. Yes, they're small, but they are so pigmented that it's kind of like having a large palette. So the pigment is there. And I actually love how small they are for traveling. Y'all have seen me use these endlessly now, um, but they're really, really fun. And I really think that y'all will like them, especially with 20% off. Now let's grab that first shade from that MAC palette that we started with. And we'll just, oh, let's make sure we're not setting creases, just like our under eye. Can't be doing that. Mm -mm. And then let's just press that here, kind of melt it in. And then we can just connect it. We might need to add a little bit of this shade, remember, because we put that in our crease, just a little tap of that. See where that takes us. But that white base is going to make this look a lot different. And the reason why is because it's showing it very true in the pan now. So we might have to just work a little harder to connect it. There we go. I'll grab that darker shade. I'm just gonna keep building and transitioning that over. Now we're gonna take micellar water on our C30. Start to clean this up. This is gonna to have to be blended with foundation, but it did need that initial cleanup. And we'll do the same thing over here. I don't wanna do a wing because the shadow itself, it's got a little bit of an angle to it, but I do wanna darken that lash line. So I'm gonna grab this pencil here from Gift Beauty. I use these all the time, highly recommend. They're probably my favorite neutral colored. And by neutral, I mean brown, navy, black. We should say classic, classic colored pencil liners. 
disappeared for a second. There was a family meeting in the front yard. We got new mulch and we all had to go outside and look at it. It was absolutely beautiful. We had a few of the bushes trimmed. The flowers are just, were just looking so pretty and it, it was a family outing. <laughs> Oh, I didn't tell you what I was doing. I was just taking a little bit of the brown eyeshadow that's here and just softening the top part of the liner. And this is your reminder to do your eyes first. You actually have so much more control than instead of doing your base first. Um, obviously, if doing your base first is working, you continue to do that. But I also feel that I do very extensive looks, a lot of packing, and I'm gonna have fallout. That technique is going to have fallout. So I do that, and then I'm able to put my eye cream back on after I clean it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now we're gonna let that sink in. We switched it up today. These are Nor Fairy Light lashes from House of Lashes. I remember I used to wear Noir, Noir, <laughs> Noir Fairy, uh, and the original Noir Fairy um, years ago. I think it was 2016. Those and Iconic lashes. I think those are all I wore. But these are really fun and it's a fun way to switch it up. So a lot of you are proving that that theory I talked about in the beginning is correct because I haven't been as active on my stories recently. And a few of you are saying, oh my gosh, you're right. You popped up today. Now with this neon, we're gonna need a little bit more coverage to cover up this area and to kind of melt it as opposed to just a classic neutral eye. So we're gonna use concealer. It's gonna have more pigment. We're gonna use this one from Natasha Denona. And we're still gonna use a fluffy brush. I have my in a rush brush here, the E29. Now, what we're not gonna do is we're still not gonna pick up a lot of it. And I'm gonna pick it up on the side. I'm gonna do a couple taps over here to make sure I don't have too much on the brush. It's always gonna be better to build and cover this area than going in with way too much concealer and then just messing up the eyeshadow look. So I picked up a little bit more, same technique. I just don't wanna cover up too much of it, but then we also need to cover it up. It's a very fine line, but it's also not as scary as it sounds. It's just about taking time to build and melt. Look how pretty that looks already. Look how nice and cleaned up that looks now. The inner corner looks nice and even. And then we can kind of take whatever's left and just tap it across here. Remember, by now there's hardly any on here, but it's going to really melt it into the skin. Seamless. Okay, so we're using the Ritual Defee. I'm probably not saying that right, but I do try my best. Um, this is the three drop foundation. I've used this before and I love it. It's going to be a little too light for me right now and a little too yellow, but once I go any darker, it gets very, very, very warm. So there is that, but if you can find a shade in this, I, it's a 10 out of a 10 on this formula. It is gorgeous. It has beautiful coverage. It's, it's wonderful. I'll be able to fix it. I can definitely fix it, but I just want to make sure that y'all know um, everything about it, about the color range. But the formula is one of the most beautiful formulas I've seen in a while. Definitely some updated makeup science in this one. I think with bronzer we could get it to match down here. It'll be really nice. Ooh, it's so blurry. I think it's so pretty. Natasha did on a concealer again. This is the shade R5. Hey, you know what does look fun and kind of looks like a gimmick, but maybe not, just for fun. Kind of just like eyeshadow underneath your eye in a sense is the Ombre Concealer. Have you seen that? Where they go from lightest to darkest, darkest being your blush out this way. It looks really, really fun. I might try that. I need to find the original creator. I thought that was a really fun idea. We're gonna have to try it. Okay, let's work this in with our C31. Remember, we like to use a small brush. I know you might think this is very tedious, but this is gonna help everything wear so much longer. Um, I really thought out the size of this brush because I know that once I have it all smoothed, then I grab my foundation brush and then we just blur those edges very quickly. So we are gonna go ahead and set it, but I found a really cool little powder contour that's really affordable, so I will hop off and film that. Um, but for right now, let's go ahead and set. <gasps> 
Where's my puff? Let me get a puff. So I want to do a situation because I want to use the Jones Road, but the light doesn't even show how pink it is. It's honestly blush pink. So that underneath my eye, this might help you. So here's the Givenchy, which is what I'm about to use. This is still a pink powder and this, it's even more pink in person. But that being said, I'm gonna show you how to use it. So right now I have the Givenchy evened out on my puff. Let's make sure this is nice and smooth underneath here. Okay, let's go in and set. So pretty. I also feel like a lot of you might look at how this looks on my face right now and think that looks so greasy, so oily. It's not, it's not. You have to remember that powder is going to be added. Don't ever worry about that. Don't look at this until it's set because now look that it's set. Look underneath here, completely different situation. Okay, I'm just gonna use what's left to lightly set the center. I might actually be doing three powders today because I feel ever since I discovered the Makeup Forever powder, I know it's extra, I know it's out of control, but I love makeup and I already have all this, so I might as well use it. But I really like to bring life back with that Makeup Forever powder because I feel like the Givenchy in the summer is just a little too matte. But before we move on, I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna pick up this Jones Road Pink Powder. And I wanna compare this one to the one size, but I'll take it and I'll kind of use it as a pre-blush. You can already see that it's adding pink. Do you see how pink that is? It looks like I'm putting on a very light colored blush. But that being said, I really like it this way. I'm just kind of tapping that excess away. It's very pretty and it's very subtle. And I feel like it's a lot easier to use a pink powder like this than it is to use a blush underneath here to kind of get that blush transition situation. So that's how I've been using these extremely pink powders. They do turn my under eye extremely I was saying alone, they turn my under eye extremely pink. I think these might be great for deeper skin tones, medium, deep, um, if you wanna kind of play around with that pink under eye trend because they are so pigmented. But they are still a white base, so it might take a little bit of technique to make sure that it doesn't leave a cast, but that's what makeup's, that's the fun of it. We just kind of play around with it till we get to where we're wanting to go on that makeup journey. But th these are even a little too pigmented for my skin tone as an under eye situation and not a pre-blush. That's what I'm using it as, pre-blush. Okay, let me finish setting the rest of my face. I'm just gonna use the Givenchy. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more because it's a little shiny. And then I'll be back and we'll talk about some other things. But I wanna film this because I like that the brand took time to actually name the product properly. Okay, I'll be right back. Let's get wild and let's use this as blush. It's gonna be hard to get it out of here, but we can do it. We got this. Yes, why not, right? That's really pretty. It's more subtle than I thought. Let's build it up some more. Ooh, it looks so good. I'm so excited. I love makeup. Ooh, yeah, build that up. Now I'm screaming, I'm so excited. That is so pretty. So now let's just go back into this shade. I can't wait for y'all to see this with back camera. These colors are wild. And we're just gonna press that shade underneath here. So I want the lips to be pink, but I don't want them to just be neon pink, but I still want them to be pink. And I love this one because you can still kind of see your skin through it. It's not just completely opaque. And, and I love the shimmer. Plus it really transforms depending on what lip liner you pair with it. So let me figure that out. Oh, I got a jean bean hair at my nose. <laughs> Let's get a little wild. I'm gonna use something a lot warmer and more brown. This is Terracotta from Huda Beauty. Ooh, that's pretty. I got too excited and forgot to tag this. I'll tag it right now, but I was gonna show you anyways. I'm gonna take it again and just kind of blend everything together with it now. Is this not one of the prettiest lips you have ever seen? 
I just feel like it's so summery. Ooh. I like this look. All right, that is gonna be it for today. Um, just bear with me while we kind of make that little bit of a transition. I do not want y'all to think that y'all are not gonna have daily tutorials. You are. You're just gonna have them somewhere that's gonna be easier to search and somewhere they might be more appreciated. Not from y'all, from the app. <laughs> I love y'all so much. And I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I love, I love change. You know, a lot of people, um, they look at change as such a bad thing, but change is growth. It's not always bad. And I'm excited. I really am. I love y'all so much. I don't know what I'm posting tonight, but we'll, we'll be posting. I love you and I will see you in the comments.